everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to Mystical Munchies, featuring the official Catan cookbook. We're starting off with this cookbook with the appetizer, Tavern Pretzel Bites and Beer Cheese. As this is another cookbook with stories, let's tell the story for this one. Settle in for some tavern food with these pretzel bites with beer cheese. They'll keep you warm and cozy as you relax and enjoy an evening with friends. Tip. If boiling your own pretzels sounds like too much work, feel free to buy frozen. You may lose some of that classic pretzel taste, but if you're looking for an easy treat, they'll save the day. Mix up your snack table by adding in some scalded feta barbarian skewers or stuffed mushrooms with fresh island herbs for a, balance, for a balanced selection. Of those two recipes, the only one I'd be interested in is the feta barbarian skewers potentially. I hate mushrooms. But that's just my opinion on those. Anyway, as usual, the ingredients are waiting for us at the table, so let's head in that direction. We've got a two-part split on the ingredients. In order to make the pretzel bites themselves, we need a quarter cup of baking soda, a 12 to 14 ounce container of pre-made pizza dough, an egg beaten with a tablespoon of water, and kosher or pretzel salt to taste. <clears throat> For the beer cheese, we need three tablespoons of flour, and of course it's not telling me what I need to do with the flour. My instincts say to melt it, so I'm going to be probably melting that once I get to the beer cheese. Three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, half teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic pepper, or garlic powder, and smoked paprika. Three quarters of a cup of milk, two-thirds of a cup of beer. You can use a lager for a milder flavor or an IPA for a more intensive flavor. I've gone with an IPA for this one. A teaspoon each of Dijon mustard and Worcestershire sauce. I've never been able to pronounce that well to save my life. And I'm sure some of my British fans, like Ruff for instance, will probably come in the comments and yell at me, you don't pronounce it that way. And I probably don't, but I don't know how to pronounce it. I've looked it up on Google, but I still can't get the hang of it. And the last ingredient we need is two cups of sh shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Ah, say that five times fast. Anyway, let's move into the kitchen and start putting this recipe together. There we go. I've got a pot of water just off shot that I'm working on bringing up to a boil. And I've got the oven chirping and preheating to 425. Thank you for your commentary on that handy dandy oven. While we're waiting for the water to come to a boil though, we're going to work on the pizza dough. So we're going to roll that out and cut it into two inch pieces. It's been a while since I've worked with Pillsbury freshly made dough, which I've got that right here. Bring the garbage can in a little closer. Hopefully not so close that I get everything in the way. Get a spoon out, see if I can top this. There we are. I was gonna say I could probably I could also probably slam this against the counter, but no need for that, I don't think. And there's the oven coming up to temperature. The oven is, the water's not boiling quite yet, so we've got plenty of time on this to get these cut up into pieces. So I think we're going to go about like there. Whoop. There we are. Uh, we're gonna grab a. I'm gonna grab a paper plate as well, so I've got somewhere to store these once I get them cut up. Okay. As usual, I'll do the first line of this pizza dough. 
and I'm not going to bore you guys with the whole thing. Plus, I'm still waiting for the water to come to a boil anyway. So now that we've done that, I'm going to be doing that for a little while, so I'll turn the camera off, and we'll come back when the water's boiling. The water's starting to come up, come up to a boil, and I poured actually poured a little bit off, because I... I was worried that it was going to be too high, especially when again it starts to get into this next step. So now that we've got the water coming up to a boil, now we're going to add in the quarter cup of baking soda, which I'll measure that out off camera. Actually, let's get a paper towel under under that while I measure it out. That way, cleanup is just a matter of. If I have any excess cleanup, it's just a matter of throw the paper towel in the garbage. Oh, like it will be in a minute here. Okay. Whoa. Looks like pouring a little bit of that off was a very good idea. Looks like pouring a little bit of that water off is actually a brilliant idea. So we'll mix that up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and start adding in the pizza dough bites. And yes, I know there's going to be a lot of them here. Hopefully I can get them all in here. little bit of room in here. Got just a few more I've got to get in here. I think I probably should have poured a little more water off, but it looks like it's working so far. So we're going to let those boil for about two to three minutes until they, or until they're puffy. So I'll set a kitchen timer here for three minutes. The baking soda can go back up. And that's just a little bit of... Oh. That's just a little bit of water with baking soda. I think there, don't think there's anything there that I really need to be worried about there. But rather than sit idle, we're going to get a baking sheet ready with parchment paper. Oh wow, that actually is puffing up way more than I thought it would. I even poured off. I even poured off some of the water to try to help with that, but that's spilling out way more than I thought it would. In fact, it says two to three minutes, so I'm probably going to cut this. I'm probably going to cut this early, watching how much it's how much water is overflowing here. And I thought I poured off enough water. But I'm going to also get a cooling rack ready, which is also known as my wire rack that you've seen with the bacon. And oh boy, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cut that off in about 30 seconds here. 
I'm gonna get my wire rack ready so I can tram so I can move them over there to cool briefly. I've got a slotted spoon ready for that purpose. So we'll give it about another 15 seconds and we're taking these off. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna kill the heat and get these off. I've got a couple of oven mitts right here, so I'm gonna get these off the burner. Then we'll take them out to cool briefly. I probably needed a, even a bigger pot than this. I thought these stock pots would be big enough, but clearly, but clearly they weren't. And these are the, well, these are the biggest pots I've got. They're probably going to be a little bit underdone since I panicked, but we'll see what we can do about that. give those about, I would say, probably, we'll give those like five to ten minutes to cool off, but in the meantime, I'm going to get the, we'll go ahead and get the egg wash ready, so we need a tablespoon of water for that along with an egg. Do a little bit of clean up here. I don't want to get near the burner with cleanup just yet, but I will be... I'll probably be doing a bit of cleanup on there as well when I do dishes later on. So let's go ahead and prepare our egg wash. So we've got a mug right here for that. Here's our egg. And I'm going to bring the egg to the, to the water rather than try to bring the water to the egg. So I'll prepare the, I'll pour out the, the tablespoon of water I need out of the sink off shot. Half. And there's my tablespoon. Okay. The eggs can go back into the fridge. Here. We'll mix up the egg wash. Okay. The egg wash is ready, so we'll give it about another five minutes for the pretzel bites to cool off, and then we'll bring the parchment paper lined baking sheet back in shot. So I probably panicked a little bit over the baking soda and boiling water on the, on the cooktop, except for cleanup purposes, but yeah, so we just cut it a little bit early. Now we're going to take the, now we're going to take the dough bites and we're going to spread them over to the cookie sheet and try to space them out as evenly as we can. It's not going to be great most likely, but let's see what we can do with it. Yep. Let's see if we can lay that one down a little bit more flat. 
One thing I'm going to try to pick up in the near future, like the immediate future today, is I'm going to try to get a bigger stock pot so I don't have something like that happen again. Yes, it's kind of a hazard of life in the kitchen, but it would be nice to be able to contain these a little bit better, especially if I end up liking the recipe and want to make it again for my group on game days. At least game days here, anyway. Hmm. All right, let's see if I can make a little bit of space on here because I've got a few more of the bites I need to get on here. About like that. There. We need to get two more on here. And okay. I'll wash my hands real quick. wire rack will move over toward the dishes. Then I just grabbed a brush so we can brush the top of the tops of the bites with the egg wash. This shouldn't take too long to do. So we'll just go ahead and do it in real time. Alright, I think that will probably do there, and we'll pour the rest of the egg wash out, because I don't think we need it for anything else. Nope. Now we're going to sprinkle the, sprinkle the dough with some of the kosher salt. Actually, let's do this. Not, oh, that's probably a little bit more salty than I want to be on these. So easy does it. Now, I've never made my own pretzels before, so this is going to be an interesting experience. I think these are going to be a bit saltier than I would normally like. I think that will do it there. And then we'll put these in for another 10 to 12 minutes until golden brown to eventually serve with the beer cheese. We'll set a timer for that. But of course, in order to be able to serve these with beer cheese, we need to make the beer cheese. So let's move over, back over to the stove and we'll work on that next. Had a little bit of a delay in here between wanting to soak up a little bit of the water from the pretzel, from the pizza dough and wanting to make sure I had the right pot for the job that I was going to be, right size saucepan that I was going to be going for. So now we're going to combine the butter and flour in a medium saucepan, or in a, yeah, in a medium saucepan 
over medium heat. This might be a little bit bigger than I need for the job, but I think it's what we're going to go with. We'll do a little bit of picking some of this stuff up. Then we're going to add in the butter, which I went ahead and melted because that's what my instincts were telling me to do with it. Because the recipe doesn't specify, but I figured melting it was probably what I wanted to do anyway with it. Although it might melt, it, might, it probably would have melted incidentally having it in there, but I wanted to make sure it went in there pre-melted. And then three tablespoons of flour. I've got my one and a half tablespoon here. So I need two of these. And we're good to go. And I will set that over medium heat. So I want this burner. Put that at about a five. And I want to make that into a so we're going to whisk the flour and the butter together to form a paste, which means I want a whisk rather than one of my wooden spoons. I have a suspicion that while we're working on the beer cheese, the timer for the pretzels is probably going to go off as I'm looking at this. I'm actually going to put that out of the way. Sauces I've always been terrible at making, so we'll find out how this is going to go. But that is most definitely not a paste. Hopefully it's, it'll liquefy as we start putting in more of the liquid. So that might be about where I, where I want it to be. So now we're going to add in the spices. We want a half a teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, and smoked paprika. Once I put these up, now we want to start going for the liquid ingredients. Now we want the three quarters of a cup of milk. two-thirds of a cup of beer. And 
and a teaspoon each of Dijon mustard and Worcestershire sauce. Mm. All right, so we need the spigot for that. Not surprising. And the Worcestershire sauce, which I'm probably going to have to open. I was going to say, do I need to dry my hands? But I think the answer is no. I can actually get my nails under the plastic. And there's the, there's the pretzel bites, just like I expected, about ready to come out of the oven. There's the teaspoon of that. And now we want to whisk that until the liquid thickens. Which I'm going to have to move the camera out of the way here in about 30, in about 30 some odd seconds here. So I can get the pretzel bites out of the oven. Okay, you zip it. That's the oven I'm talking to, by the way. So now we will get the, actually I'm gonna put something down so I can put the cookie sheet down on top of it. Move the camera out of the way so I can get the pretzel bites out. Lift those clear over the camera. The pretzel bites at a glance did look a little bit underdone, but not too bad. All right, we can shut the oven off since we won't need that anymore. It is starting to, the sauce is starting to thicken but you need to be very careful. You don't want it to be bubbling. Because if it's because if it's too hot, you'll curdle the cheese when you add it. And it is definitely starting to bubble, so I want to be very careful of that. In fact, probably in about another minute or two, I am going to take the I am going to take the beer cheese off the heat. Dijon mustard along with the rest of the milk in the fridge. Garbage can get out of my way. Definitely starting to thicken. We'll wait for it to turn 934. I'm trying to be very precise on timing before I take this off the stove. Okay, that is coming off the stove. So we'll move over to the counter. Now we want to add in the cheddar cheese. And we want to stir until it's just melted. So I've got my sharp cheddar cheese right here. And 
and I've got a wooden spoon over here. We want to stir that until the cheese is just melted. Okay. I think that all looks good there, so I'm going to get this into a bowl, we'll plate some of the pretzel bites, and then I'll meet you guys over at my desk for the taste test. I've got some of the pretzel bites along with the beer cheese dip over here. The pretzel bites do still look a little bit underdone, but I think that's a product of me panicking over how much the water was flowing out on the stock pot. But let's see what I think of these. So let's give this a taste and see what I think. We'll just we'll do a pl plain pretzel bite. We'll do a plain pretzel bite, then we'll actually do the beer cheese. They are a bit salty, which is my fault for using the open, the more open spigot on the kosher salt, and the dough is a bit underdone, which I kind of thought it was going to be coming out of once I panicked on the water. But let's see what I think of the beer cheese. Maybe I at least got that right. The beer cheese actually is pretty good. I feel like if I were to do like, say, store-bought pretzel, pretzel bites, and then the beer cheese, it would probably go over very well. So yeah, I definitely panicked on the pretzel bites when I saw how everything was overflowing. But I do think it, I do think if I could get a bigger stock pot, it probably would make the pretzel bites turn out a lot better. But that's another episode of Mystical Munchies in the books. Next week, we'll be making the side seven grain bread. Plenty of busy, plenty of great stuff coming up on the channel. Later, to, later today sometime, I don't know exactly when yet, we'll be headed to Lambeau Field for my 1972 play th replay of Momentum Football, as the Chicago Bears will be in town to play the Green Bay Packers. Tomorrow, we're playing Call of Cthulhu Freeform, and I expect that to be a morning stream. So probably about... Probably about 7.30, 8 o'clock Central Time, I'll be looking to go live with that. Then on Wednesday, we're jumping back into our Night Fighter as we play Night Fighter Ace from Compass Games. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.